High drama in a Kenosha County courtroom where an emotional Kyle Rittenhouse recounted the moments he shot three people during the riots in Kenosha last year. Let's get straight to Charles Benson leading our coverage from Kenosha live at five. Charles. Shannon, you're right, a dramatic day and an important day as Kyle Rittenhouse has been on the stand most of the day and most of it under cross-examination. Rittenhouse repeatedly saying he acted in self-defense, but the prosecution walked the jury through each of the shootings and tried to push back on that claim. I want to bring in now Stephanie Haynes, who has been in the courtroom from the moment this trial began, began and has today's dramatic developments. Charles, you said it. He has been on that witness stand all day and not long into it, he broke down on the witness stand when his defense attorney was asking him about the moments leading up to the shooting of Joseph Rosenbaum. That's right, run. The jury was sent out for a short break. When Kyle Rittenhouse came back to the stand, he spoke more clearly about the moments before he shot Rosenbaum. From me to where the judge is coming at me with his arms out in front of him, he, he, I remember his hand on the barrel of my gun. After that, he said he started running to find police to turn himself in. I didn't do anything wrong. I defended myself. The next thing I remember is Anthony Huber striking me in the head with a skateboard. Rittenhouse testified just before he shot, he could feel Anthony Huber grab the gun Rittenhouse was carrying and testified he could see Gage Grosskreutz's handgun pointed at him at close range. On cross-examination, prosecutors pressed Rittenhouse on what his intent was behind the shootings. Everybody that you shot at that night you intended to kill, correct? I didn't intend to kill them. I intended to, I intended to stop the people who were attacking me. Judge Bruce Trader scolded Assistant District Attorney Thomas Binger for his line of questioning for attempting to ask Rittenhouse about media interviews he gave after he was arrested. I was a astonished when you began your examination by commenting on the defendant's post-arrest silence. That's basic law. It's been basic law in this country for 40 years, 50 years. I have no idea why you would do something like that. The judge raised his voice again when Binger asked if he could ask Rittenhouse on the stand about a video of Rittenhouse weeks before the shootings. The judge previously said that wouldn't be admissible in court. Don't get brazen with me. Okay, so because of that, the defense asked for a mistrial with prejudice, which means it could not be retried. But as we know, that trial is still going on. The defense says they have three more witnesses to call. One of them is their use of force expert, and that could take a little while. So we're expecting a full day tomorrow. Yep, the jury has gone home. The cross-examination has ended. But let's pick up on that point about a mistrial. Joining us now live is local defense attorney and legal analyst Patrick Cafferty. So thank you for being here. What, you know, we saw the judge very animated at the prosecution here and the defense threatening a mistrial. What's your take on what's going on all without the jury seeing this? I think that's the point, Charles, is that the juries, pardon me, the jurors did not see this and therefore it might make good theater on television, but the reality of how this is going to affect the outcome is that the jurors don't really know about it unless they're going to watch television, which they've been instructed not to do. But what about the point he was making? So I think the point that he was making was he wants to keep control over his courtroom, and I don't think he's going to declare a mistrial. I think he's going to hold this over the lawyers' heads and make sure that everybody toes the line. So not long after he took the stand, he broke down, and uh, they had to take a break. They had to send the jury out of the room. What's your take on that? So that's a pretty rare event to see, number one, a defendant testify, but number two, a uh, defendant break down on the stand and a judge declare a break. Uh, I'll defer to you as to what you think of whether the jurors thought that it was a sincere breakdown or if it was something that was staged, but it could certainly have an impact in terms of whether the jury believes him when he says that he thinks he was under threat. It certainly seemed like a lean-in moment for the jury, but let me ask you now, though Rittenhouse has been on the stand longer with cross-examination, pushing back on this narrative. What was your tent down there? You're with an AR-15 that you're not legally able to have, but he's claiming all along he's self-defense here. What is the jury hearing in this cross-examination? So I think you're on to it. They repeatedly heard from him threat, threat, threat. He stuck with that. He never wavered. So I think he's done his part in terms of trying to establish self-defense. I think the real issue is going to be whether the jury believes that the state has proven that he provoked these attacks against him. And I'm not sure that the, the state did that during this cross-examination.
All right, Patrick Hafferty, thank you very much. Stephanie Haynes, thank you. We will continue to follow all of the events heading up or going on here.